This is the Blockade Pinball Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Freebus, a.k.a. Shut Your Trap. Joining me as always, halfway across the world, it's Jared Morgan. Hello there, Professor Chris. I'm not going to go by that. Sorry. <laughs> you, can, you can try all you want, but nope. <laughs> <laughs> I have to. I can't help it. <laughs> so uh, we weren't expecting to be recording this week, but uh, we did say, hey, if any news happens, and there's surely got to be something that happens before Thanksgiving, then by all means, we'll pop on and do a show. Hey, guess sure what, enough. kids? <laughs> <laughs> Things happened. Things happened. And not just of the minor variety either. We're talking of the uh, major variety. So we're going to not even bother with the uh, the banter and go straight into this, which is mm. Zen Studios has been purchased acquired, mm. if you will, uh, by a group called the Embracer Group, and uh, particularly uh, as part of Saber Interactive. And Which is an arm of of um, Embracer. Right. One of the many arms by the sound of so, things. Very right, so basically group. Embracer went on a, a spending spree, and over the past mm. well, year has purchased, what is it, over 13, 13 studios? Yeah. Um, that's that's a very very active acquisition, right? Period. It seems like a lot to acquire in a year. So these, this company is the same company who uh, has THQ, which is THQ pretty Nordic. Well known. Nordic, yeah. Which I because I think there's a many THQ. There's so. a many THQs. Yeah. I think <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, this is an area that we're we're sort of a little bit on the on the shady side with. But we know we know pinball licensing and how that works, but we don't know how studios work and all the different arms of them as right. much. So it's a very interesting world. So of um, course that it's opened up. Everybody freaked out immediately without oh. applying any logic. Oh, oh, doom and gloom. It's going to become another PopCap versus EA, you know, whatever. <laughs> and uh, meanwhile, me and Jared sat back and kind of went, does this sound like a bad thing to you? I don't know. What do you think, Jared? Is, is this went, a bad nah. idea? <laughs> I went, nah. No? No, it sounds fine. So uh, we're, here to massive, talk you, we're here to talk you all off a ledge. Throwing money? At, at the, <laughs> like, I don't see that as a really bad idea for a a, uh, a burgeoning studio so yeah so let's start off with the the what are the potential negatives let's just get mm. those out of the way what people have been yep. saying and that is oh my god here comes a larger company acquiring a small independent company uh the larger company probably could care less about their content they're merely buying them for library Brand. cachet, you know, to build up their portfolio and they're going to just wind up dissolving Zen within a matter of years. Mm. There's con number one. Do I have that right, Jared? Yeah, that seems like a common sentiment out there at the moment. Okay. What would you say uh, comment number two negative wise was uh, with this acquisition? Uh, would it have something to do with you know, Zen becoming one of the big guys and not actually worrying about pinball anymore and just focusing on all the RPG stuff and only worrying about, you know, that sort of line of the business. Yes, that would be another one because <laughs> there was a lot of talk about how, oh, they were really excited by Zen's RPG games and want to help expand those and... Mm. Uh, it helps then grow those into a larger thing. And everybody went, but what about the pinball? Because some yeah. of the other studios, if I'm not mistaken, are RPG studios. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Uh, so that was a, a negative thing. And then uh, ultimately it was that, that Zen will lose its independence and uh, will purely be making things on a commercial front, uh, it'll all become about the numbers of and not the content. Do, do you think it's a, not about that now? Like, <laughs> is it is it that what a studio does to remain profitable? Like, <laughs> I just don't understand that logic at all. Right. So <clears throat> the way that me and Jared have kind of looked at it is, well, no, this is more like 
you're an independent studio that's been wanting to grow. You really need capital, though, injected into you to afford the expansion that you want to go in. And mm. here comes somebody saying, hey, we'll buy you and we'll give you that capital. Seems seems pretty reasonable. So I don't know. There's, there's that angle of it. Uh, the other thing is now that you have various studios that you're going to be aligned with, by all means, they can help shore up the negative aspects that are currently within your company. And I saw somebody point this out. If there's a problem with Zen's quality assurance uh, regarding they don't have enough playtesters or uh, whatever goes into to QA uh, at the studio itself, at the studio level, before it ever goes out to beta testers, um, that there are specifically one or two of the companies that got acquired where that's their primary focus. Right. So you become, you basically go, look, we need this service. Oh, let's go to the umbrella company and ask for that. Not literally Not the, the umbrella yeah, company. Yeah, this isn't Resident Evil. <laughs> no, there's no T-virus here, but the umbrella company that sits over the top. <laughs> um, so there's that. We always point this out too. You got the Zen Pinball Division. You got the Zen All the Other Games Division. <laughs> yeah, let's call it that. <laughs> and while the two might mingle a little bit and share certain resources, uh, for the most part, they're two separate entities. Um, mm. And one's workflow does not affect the other's workflow. No. So we really need to get off this idea that, oh my God, see, Zen's just going to drop pinball and go whole hog into RPG. Quite the opposite. <laughs> mm, it is rather the This is not that Farsight was structured like that. They had all their eggs in one basket, and they all the, the whole studio is just pinball, pinball, pinball. So when they had another like your contract job, like you know, pro bowling insert title here, they had to take people off the pinball side of things to do that. But that's not the case with Zen. They've got dedicated resources in each department that look after a specific part of the business. Not only that, but think about this. Again, influx of capital. What would that mean for Zen Pinball specifically? Well, mm. for starters, well. maybe the Pinball <clears throat> division, and probably Zen in general, I would imagine their RPG division too, increases in employee size. More yeah, employees, they're get a mainly more content. Boost. Yeah, for sure. I mean, how else are they going to keep up with the, the, the extra content that you would expect a large corporation like Embracer to demand of their acquired companies right you know uh point number two there are a bunch of licenses out there um whether you want to talk bally williams licenses or just licensing in general like how they have the star wars license or the marvel license um mm. these things aren't cheap and they're really not if all of a sudden you have a larger entity with an influx of cash coming in saying hey we can help your bottom line so that you're not so razor, razor thin on the margins, you can afford mm. to reach out and actually extend beyond what you thought you were able to extend beyond before. Hey, now maybe certain licenses become that much more obtainable. That's right. Yeah, like the, maybe some of those unobtainium licenses that we've seen in Belly Williams pinball machines aren't so unobtainium anymore. Right. You know? Um, maybe, and we keep on saying this, Who's the logical place that Stern is going to land when the time comes? It's going well, to be it's going to be at Zen. And what's the problem? Mm -hmm. All their tables are licensed, and licensed. they ain't cheap. <laughs> no, they 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 don't license junk at Stern. They license really good quality properties. Yeah. So uh, I don't think that's going to be such a concern anymore. Right. So if you wanted to make yourself appealing in your pitch to Stern to say, "Hey, come over with us." Everything's yeah. cool. Right, Don't everything's cool, but, but it's like, well, why would we want to go with you? We already went with Farsight. Look what happened there. They didn't produce any of the pinball tables that we would have wanted them to produce because they refused to pay Pony up for the license. And you'd go, aha! <laughs> please, <cash."> see this, <laughs> please see this 10-year plan about your problems and uh, how we're going to solve them here. <laughs> and, and you know what? You, you bring up the 10-year plan. 
that uh, Mel has himself brought up in our interview with him. Mm. Uh, perhaps that's why they have a 10-year plan? Because this acquisition didn't just happen you know, over the course of a couple of weeks. This has got to have been months in the making. Well, acquisitions don't just happen. No. Like, they, they usually take a fair while to sort out from a legal perspective. So you would think that, you know, just as they did with FX3, with their plans to actually do Williams Pinball, this move to become acquired as part of a larger um, group is definitely strategic, definitely part of the 10-year plan, and probably would be instrumental to execution. So this can only be a good thing. For the most part. <laughs> I mean, I look, think so. look, there are always possibilities that it all goes to... And... Yeah, it could, it could go to CAC, but look, you know, I don't think that's going to happen. I don't either, and the Certainly... way that Zen has been positioning themselves, this is the natural progression of things. And the way that I kind of liken it in terms of where this can go, uh, my two favorite games on PlayStation were the Uncharted series and uh, God of War. Both of those were independent studios, Naughty Dog and mm -hmm. Santa Monica Studios. Sony, realizing that, you know, although they had paid to lock up, you know, like the Crash Bandicoot series to be a PlayStation exclusive, mm -hmm. they eventually realized, hey, maybe we should just buy the studio itself, which they did. So they bought both <laughs> Naughty Dog well, I think... Well, did they buy out Naughty Dog? No, I don't think they actually bought Naughty Dog. Um, but they certainly locked them up into long-term exclusivity. And then... Yes. But I think Santa Monica Studios, they did actually buy. Uh, but what happened then? That was when suddenly they were able to expand their teams and blow up the games into Amazing. much more complicated right. things. They become the very thing that you absolutely want to play. Hmm. because they've got the development resources to actually make the game far deeper than it could ever have been before. Uh, exactly. So hmm. that's why it's... I know, like you said, oh my God, it's going to be PopCap. PopCap wasn't exactly positioned to... To be in a place of power at EA. Um, no, EA is a <laughs> EA is a bit of a juggernaut, really. Right, so, and this and yeah. and the Embracer Group is certainly not EA. I mean, have you has anybody ever heard of Embracer Group or Saber, just mm. in general, prior to this? No, never. I have no. no recollection of them at all. And, it just came out of nowhere, basically. And if anything, this is Zen on the rise to becoming EA. Hmm. Potentially, yeah. It's it's like I think where whereas EA is a larger game development studio, but it started off really group, small. Yeah, that's right. Uh, they they were really small, yeah. like, and now they're huge because they just keep on buying up studios and right. buying up properties. But the thing about EA is that they're a game studio, and I don't think Embracer Group is a studio they're a conglomerate of businesses exactly by a, like i said they're program. they're having a portfolio a library of stuff yeah so it's a very different it's a very different notion to the the whole relationship between popcap and when they got bought out by ea and how terrible the games are now because because ea and microtransactions so i th i just kind of tend to fall back on when at the start of the year when Zen was saying, oh, 2020 is going to be wild and you guys, we can't wait to show you everything that's going to be happening. I have to believe that that's because they were planning for this. They understand what joining this group is going to mean for them. And that pinball is only going to get bigger with Zen, as yeah. will their RPG stuff get bigger yep. and the more zen branches out and has successful platforms of games of different types the uh, more attractive they'll become to to potentially expand further in the future like 
And it helps them weather any storm that happens with any one particular game not doing well or all of a sudden there being some catastrophic failure of some sort. Or, I don't know. That's right. Definitely not all eggs in one particular basket. So they do have a number of different like product lines now um, that they can lean on and experiment with and decide whether they're viable or not or can them or keep them or whatever. You know, There's plenty of flexibility they can use now. Um in their portfolio of games so again don't think this is anything to really worry about and if anything it should be something to be very happy about, I mean, about. Mm, i'm more than optimistic about it i actually think i'm very happy about it this can only mean good things for the studio i think and I'm happy to eat my hat if that's not the case <laughs> i don't have a hat but i'll eat something resembling jared a hat. is giving it the blocking yep. stamp of approval if yeah, we have right. a stamp if we if we had a stamp, it, it would absolutely get one. Yes. Other news. Hmm. At Games finally decided to release images of what their Legends pinball cabinet will actually look like, as well as it actually having uh, gameplay on the screens we've been waiting for something other than a render to appear because that's what all the other images were up until this point. And then lo and behold, they did a uh, media dump and it popped up all over the place. And so we decided, because we're not part of that media dump, <laughs> no. we need to take a look at this with fresh eyes because... Just in that last episode, we were talking about what are the things that uh, each of the cabinet manufacturers will take away from the other cabinet manufacturers. Exactly. And what would they what would they honestly steal as a concept? And interestingly enough, some of those things wound up just plain being in this build. So mm. this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna we're gonna take a look at these and we're gonna kind of break this down. So let's uh, drop us down to a little small screen here. Look at that. And through the magic of technology, because I'm slowly figuring these things out. Da, 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 da. <laughs> there there it, is, it is, folks. Now, that is what do we the, see here? That is the redesign. So, yeah. yes, what are we seeing here? What is, we are actually seeing this with images on the screen. We are, uh, I have a better image coming up that we'll uh, look at with the, uh, the shape of the cabinet. But look at that. There's an actual lock bar now for uh, yeah. Jared to not have pointy corners uh, jabbing into oh. his palms. Yep. Um, I'm so glad to see that added. Like uh, That was a massive oversight. The crazy busy apron is gone. It's now just a simple Legends pinball. I think they did much better, much better there. It's not so busy on the eye there. Um, not so busy. It had, on it had way too much visual weight. Like your eye was just drawn to that all the time like right. when you're playing the game. So this is much better. Yeah. Right. He's better. So there's there's that angle. So so far so good. So far we're saying yay. Um, although what is up with <laughs> what is up with the little tiny bag glass uh, with the speaker? Oh yeah. And the DMD display. I'm assuming because of what's being shown on the playfield with the whole cabinet. This this is probably flyby mode, flyover mode. Um, yeah, it looks similar to it because I don't see a view like that normally in Pinball Arcade. Like no. it looks like it's doing table overview mode. Yeah, so that's what I'm mm. kind of assuming is with that. Okay, but let's uh, let's close that picture out. Let's look at the uh, next one we have here. Ah, okay. So here you can see that the the cabinet is not so wedge shaped like it was previously. Uh, somebody, mm. <laughs> I saw somebody that had likened it to a shopping cart. Um, <laughs> Yes, it did look previously. a bit like that. Uh, this also yeah. gives us a little bit more detail, obviously, on the legs, which, which we look. have another picture we're going to show you. The I the legs, I don't know, they're weird. Um, they mm. look like metal, but they look like they're sprayed with something not metal. I don't know. Um, Looks like what I use when I'm like restoring my dodgy Gottlieb pinballs, and I have really rusty legs, and I use the Rustoleum. Um, <laughs> like <laughs> silver on them it, and it, it's a matte finish it sort of is matte instead of chrome it's maybe has a little bit of sheen to it it's certainly not chrome no and um if you look at it though the rest of the the i guess the hardware on the machine isn't either so right i'd imagine that probably you know electroplating metal isn't cheap so 
they probably just went with the powder coating like they've done here. Um, um, it's it's durable. Also, yeah. Uh, obviously, you can also see there's a there's a better angle on the uh, corner of the uh, lock bar. Um, hmm. It looks so like it's got those lock bars, they're not just, I don't know if those are Allen screws or just rivets. Um, yeah, they're Allen screws. They're Allen screws. Because you can take... You can, I think you can take the whole side molding off okay. if you need to mold I it. I think so. Uh, yeah, that plunger, yeah, so let's talk about that plunger for a moment. That plunger is different to the one they originally had, which was sort of like a sort of a had like a taper on it. I'm using this hand motion with my fingers. <laughs> um, it's a, like a, a taper thing, but now it's actually more of a handle style thing. But it looks just... like it looks a lot like what is on the Toy Shock. And well played. It looks like a plastic plunger. It it really does look plasticky. Like the the one thing that Arcade One Ups Cabinet has over this is that they actually use a real plunger body and plunger yeah. uh, assembly, and it just it just makes it look so much better. I don't know why they would have gone with something like this when they spent so much time and effort on making something that looks as close as possible to the pinball machines in yeah. the real world. They've just done this and it just looks cheap and plasticky. Um, rather than having... Okay, so they have the uh, the faux coin door there, which is definitely an improvement over having just the four buttons across the front. Um, yeah. You still have four buttons, but now they actually look like they're integrated in part of an actual pinball cabinet. So that's good. Um, I, I like I, that. I like that. Uh, I don't know for sure, but it almost seems like the... I know they're using the same artwork on the side of the cab, but it looks like it. it's not so bright. I don't know if that's just me or mm. what other angles. But it could have just been... It could just be the angle. Well, I think the front of the cabinet looks a little bit better lit. It looks like it's front lit. Um, so the side of the cabinet might be just in a little okay. bit of shade. I, think. I still think it's way too busy um, because no that mm. that image of Gladiator doesn't have anything to do with the image of Centigrade, which doesn't have anything to do with the image of 1812 on the front. Um, it's just still a mishmash collage. Um, yeah, it is. I'm not really big on that. But all right, let's move on to the next pick here. But you know uh, that all the modders will just go, you know, we're just gonna we're just gonna wrap it and um, just put a, a wrap around it. But you know, I Joe see. average consumer probably won't even care. That's the thing. Well, or there's Joe average consumer that doesn't want to spend another eighty dollars on a wrap. Yeah, so uh, Joe, I think Joe average consumer will just go, man, whatever, I'll just put up with it. <laughs> probably uh, front of the machine. <laughs> so there you get a uh, even better look at what the coin door looks like. Um, it's nice and glossy. Uh, but there you really get the look of those legs where just from this particular photo, they just look, yeah, dull. They, they're definitely powder-coated, <laughs> dull powder-coated. Um, and then you can get an idea of also that a D-pad up on top it gives you a little uh, better. I heard they actually moved the position of that a little bit. So it's a little bit closer or centered more. So it's probably a good idea to keep it away from the edge because it was quite close to the edge before. Oh, was it really? I didn't. I didn't. Yeah. That before. And I think it's. Uh, I think it's better now. Have a look just before you go away from yeah. that um, picture. Take a look at the two screws on mm -hmm. um, the top of the 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 control pad area up the top there. That looks like to me that it's suggesting a removable panel there, right? Yes. Can you see those two? So, yes. yeah, it looks like that the reason why they've designed the uh, the lockdown bar like that you'll see more clearly that those are actually proper screws that you can undo um is that you would take off that lockdown bar, you would slide out that control panel and then you put your own one in or like from another at games family um product into that area so very similar to what akuda was doing with theirs it, it looks obvious that's what they're yeah. future proofing for there yeah. yeah uh okay so next pick would be okay Here's our look at the back box. Mm. What do you happen to notice about this image of the back box? Well, the first thing I notice is that it's a big flat piece of perspex with holes cut out of it, but there's one hole that's definitely not cut out, and that's where the At Games logo is. What would you be expecting there, Chris? I thought for sure that was a DMD. I always yep, thought that was too. a DMD. It's where the DMD would typically go. And... Yep. Imagine my surprise to realize, wait a second, this doesn't have a DMD on it? 
Yeah, the DMD turns out to be the 16 by 9 screen, it seems. Yeah, that's it, which is a 15 and a half inch screen. Yeah. Um, which so, it kind of looks tiny in that back box. It's, I mean, it's really, it's a bit like the, there's a lot of stuff in the back box that doesn't need to be there. Now, I suspect, and this is what I've seen up on looking at the forums, that you can get like an, an LCD panel that is about conveniently the same size as that Legends pinball side. And you could actually put that LCD panel potentially up into that area and turn that into a DMD. But why would so, instead they should have made the at games be the spot where you would put the DMD like you would anywhere else? <laughs> yeah. What you think about it though? Like that's a if you're thinking about the way you lay out something, you got a title, usually at the top of the you know, the back glass, then you got like the screen and the DMD down the bottom. So I I understand what you're saying, Chris. Like you think that if that's what they were thinking of doing, actually allowing them to put the LCD marquee down the bottom, they should have reversed the order of everything. Mm -hmm. But they may not have quite got that far with their thinking yet. Yeah, um, I don't know. That's a. They, I, I'm kind of I'm I'm rather disappointed <clears throat> with with this. I thought the monitor, and I should have realized with again, it's a 15 and a half inch wide or diagonal monitor. Um, I thought it was going to go edge to edge, and yeah. instead it looks like I'm there's this little tiny window. And again, my first reaction was, wait a second. So on this smaller monitor, you're now going to have them squeeze the entirety of the back glass and score display into that, which is even all the smaller. But that was my initial reaction. We'll get into why I th again why I think this is just a flyover. Um, mm. But it's hard to say. So let's uh, close that picture out. Let's bring this one up. Aha! So here's all the their ports. So it's their HDMI port, their USB port, and also their volume control buttons. Why? Yeah. Why would you put those all the way at the top of there, so that your cables can no then idea. drift down the front of your playfield? Yeah, and just obscure the top of your playfield. I mean, originally my my feeling was, why the heck would you put them there if you've got a DMD um, right next to that area? But I guess that's not a problem now because there isn't one. Um, but um, the the but, thing... the, but even the volume control. This is a practically a full size pinball machine. So oh, you're gonna just like go, oh, you're not gonna reach. You're gonna have to walk stuff. to the side of it. Yeah. Put those on the front. <laughs> That's a logical point for them. Like even decide what you want. Like if it's you know if you want to use the on the go feature of the cabinet, like you might want to consider putting things like the PC and stuff like that like towards the back of the game. And that's fine. Like, have the inputs for the PC at the back, but volume control and like on off. Is that even like an on off button up there? I like, don't know. I don't know what that uh, that like, middle button is. I just think it, that you're you're. Uh, I understand having the USB up there because that's just gonna be a stick that you can plug in. Fine. Having your and, HDMI uh, the up there makes no sense because that's gonna be a cable. That should be either at the back of the machine, to on the side of the machine, or at the front. There's yeah. somewhere anywhere other than right there. So what I've heard is there's on the back of it, there's actually a network port. So on the very back of the machine, you've got a RJ45 plug that allows you to plug into your modems, etc. So you okay. can play, you know, on, on through the cloud computers that at games offer. So why not put the HDMI connector at the back there too? It's just the panel. And all you're doing is you're running just an extra cable to that area as well. So, or just, Geez, just make it on a board. I mean, that's what they do. They just yeah. be on this one board. So no, it's a really. I don't get this. It's an odd design choice. Really odd. You know what I choice. find really dodgy as well. And this is a pet peeve of mine. With when you go and get replacement glass done, um, see that bloody watermark on the glass that they've got there. Yeah. That little, that thing. You you can ask for that to be removed when you get your pinball glass done. And why would you have that on there? Like it just number one, it's upside down. Number two, <laughs> it's like not even necessary to be there. Like just get the thing off. Hopefully that's just the prototype that they've got, and that's not going to be on the final build because right. that's gross. Like, um, I don't want any watermarks in my glass. That's just yuck. Okay, let's move on here. We have aha. 
Let's compare it to the Toy Shock machine. Granted, that's you know, the only machine that's actually been on market, so I get it. But I kind of laugh because the Toy Shock one only has the 12 got lead tables. The Legends Pinball has the 22 got lead yeah. tables, so it's almost like it's thumbing its nose at it. Um, it. It's a very bizarre thing to be comparing with. Like, And the thing I, I find, like, if, you, if you look closer at it, See how the back glass is Haunted House and there's a very thin strip of Haunted House art on the at games back glass yes. as well. Can you see that? Yes. I just went. <laughs> and you know what's funny? Uh, it's on both sides. That's the only yeah. piece of of art, art that is on both sides of the Legends pinball that's the same. That um, also seems to be where the Gottlieb logo is positioned on the at games as well. Oh, you're right. So, yeah. So that's like the only... Only bit of brand recognition that you get on the cabinet. Just right at the back there. Um, um, you can see the with this that the Legends Pinball still has a severe rake to the glass itself. The monitor that's set within, I think, is flat, more flat. Um, mm. That might be a glare uh, protection kind of thing. Uh, it could be, I, yeah. I, I don't know. But... Um, but obviously, this gives you a good angle to at least go, oh, yeah, that looks more like a regular pinball cab for the Legends pinball. Um, I'll I, say this, Chris. What's that? Which art do you prefer more? The Toy Shock. Which uh -huh. <laughs> And I'm not even a fan of Haunted House. <laughs> no, me neither. But I'll tell you what, I have that over the one that's on at games. It just looks so much better. Toy Shock really got the art right I also on that cabinet. I also, in this particular instance, like the score display. Um, just because it's legit score. And I have an image coming up that I'll show you. That's an actual yeah. score display, LCD display. It's not, I don't think, it's not a monitor display. It's an actual... Um, it's LED, LED. Oh, LCD. Or yeah. LCD, whatever it is. Yeah, that's on the Toy Shock hey, one. Before you, before you flick off that, that yeah. one, where's the plunger? It's there, the... it's hidden. Um I don't know if oh, I, can... I Oh, I could just... Is it that little red it, block? Let me see if I can uh, adjust Let's this at all to here. It let's, let's try and zoom in a little bit. Uh, this isn't always the easiest thing. Yeah, I, nope, I, I know. It's just, <laughs> oh, I just I think I can make it out. It's sort of like just where the wipeout sign is. There's a little red blob. Oh, uh, really? No, you know what? I'm not seeing the plunger at all. Where's the plunger? That's bizarre. Yeah. The, you know what they did? They took it off theirs and they put it onto the, the Legends pinball. <laughs> Yoink! <laughs> yeet! Thank you! <laughs> Yoink! Yeet! Yeah. Uh, okay. okay. That's weird. Anyway, that is weird. That's that's odd. Um, all right. I mean, they're hear. definitely they're definitely in the same room together. You can see that there's reflection from the back glass and stuff. So yeah. they're not like this is this isn't like a a mock up. They they physically right. got these two yeah, machines physically, in a room. Physically there. Um, Okay, let's so, move it on. Maybe you got knocked off in shipping. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. See, it's not even there. Where is it there? That is. That is really weird. I think there's a hole where it should be, but it's it's not there. So there's a good sense, though, of the scale. Um, you can see the height difference between what... It's uh, definitely a better height. Definitely like, better height. Admit, it's definitely better. And you can see that it's got it's got good, fairly good depth leg levelers at the back like if you have a look at the bolts on the back of the mm -hmm. on the back legs it goes up really high it's, which is course... two inches that you can adjust yeah. these and that's going to be the same case with the arcade one up one yeah that's right but i mean really the only reason why there's leg levels on a pinball machine is because well you need to level the play field right so having having that much height um on already long legs like that probably isn't really necessary at all and this should um, be with those legs. It should be at standard pinball height. They really, line. they look like a standard height, like yeah. twenty-seven and a half inch yeah. height. Those legs. So I mean, they've really done it good there. And I think um, I've heard that that's actually they've gone for a more wide body approach with the cabinet. Okay. And again, that's that's a better approach as well. I think going for a little bit of a wider, more more closer to scale cabinet is definitely a good move for Mac Games there. Um, I definitely like that approach. Okay, so let's take a look now at their back glass. When oh. okay, so 
Number one, it's I, class of 1812. Bleh, <laughs> bleh. <But>. Um, <laughs> something that I'm, I don't like about the presentation that they did, what, it was completely zoomed in. So you're not seeing it mm. in the scale of the actual backlass. You're just seeing what the zoomed in image of the backlass is. Uh, you know, I mean, we could, if we were good at photoshopping, we could totally photoshop that image onto one of the, the, right. the cabinet images and show you what it looked like. But we're not that good at Photoshop. Right. Um, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, so what they did was they squeezed it into a 16 by 9 uh, shape because that's not the actual shape of the backlass on the real class of 1812. Um, right. And then I also want you to pay attention to the score display. Um, mm. Again, that's just that's just the approximation that Farsight did for... You know, they it's lacking glow is basically, and the reason why I point yeah, it's that no out luminescence, yeah, is because here's the real one, and I'm going to adjust this a little bit so you can see. There's what the the score display should actually be doing. It's got a glow to it, that incandescent yeah. glow, and that's what is on that haunted house of Toy Shock. It's got that yeah, glow, it's, so it's got that bloom to it. Yeah. yeah, so so I appreciate that, but. So again, this is supposed to be a, well, this isn't even 4x3. This is more like a 3x4 kind of shape. It's like IMAX shape um, on the real thing. So instead, what they did was they just squeezed the entirety of the image. And so now you have, <laughs> you know, what was supposed to be a really tall, -looking... lanky guy. Now he's just short and squat. And, you know, your Frankenstein in the background <laughs> looks like he really has to go to the bathroom as opposed to just being knock-kneed. Um, check out the, uh, the the poor mummy. She, you know, she gained a few. Um, she definitely gained a few, right? Far out, yeah. Uh, it's and... just, it, the proportions just go all wonky. And I don't know exactly what the solution should have been, you know, whether to, uh, and this would be on Farsight, I imagine not on yeah uh, at games. No, that's not at games' fault. It's definitely Farsight's responsibility here. Yeah, and and I don't know what the what they should have chosen to do, which is uh, letterboxed it or just only go on with a portion of the art. Of yeah, the art. I reckon they could probably have done that, um, but uh, there's no real clean solution for for this now. The the way that and let's take this as an aside. This era of pinball machine was very much four by three sort of yeah. orientation in the back glass. But think to the more modern Sterns now. Their their translites almost are sixteen by nine. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. there's that much extra like um, video panel marquee down the bottom that you actually do get a 16 by 9 representation now. Of well, the, I can even the... show you. The other backlash that they showed is for uh, Pistol Poker. And this actually yeah. is also basically a 16 by 9 backlash uh, translate. Yeah. So this translates. There's no stretching going on here. Um, this is more of a one-to-one -one scale that they go. But here's what I want to point out on this. Look at the size of that DMD. It's That's small, wedged over... Halfway, so on a 15 and a half inch monitor, that can't be any larger than six and a half inches wide at max. Yeah, I mean, probably yeah. only six inches wide. Uh, yeah. six inches wide that's going to be tiny, <laughs> really on, small. And it's not a on the it's screen. not a clear DMD to start with. No, like the, the Elven G pins had some problems with their dot matrix animations, but this is going to be the same case with um. I mean, this is Alvin G, but all the other Gottliebs that are, you know, so Cue Ball Wizard and Gladiator, mm -hmm. um, they're all going to suffer from having this tiny thing. And this is where I'm like, you should have had a dedicated DMD. <laughs> yeah. I, I can't, I'm, I'm just really blown away by the fact that that's, I don't know why I got fooled by that at games logo. Um, Look, you know, I'd, I'd almost say spend the money on the DMD only and not on the big screen for the back glass. Like, if it's going to be a pinball machine, focus on what's important. The back glass doesn't really matter that much. Well, and here's the other question. Is Farsight including the animated back glasses? We don't know. We don't know. Don't I mean, know. They're, they're there on lights, camera, action. Um, so, you know, and it's an integral part of the game. Mm -hmm. So... 
you would expect that they're they're going to be using that that back screen on the cabinet to present those i hope um there oh they have to otherwise what are they going to do like do a break the illusion and zoom in on the main screen like yeah well, and i mean un- unfortunately you know. this is part of the the presentation matters folks and it if really you're trying does. to sell us on your cabinet then you need to do certain views and really run us through what is there um so i really really hope that at games responds to uh those that have been critical of what they've been seeing and not just listening to the yes men uh and maybe goes ahead and puts out even more content for people to see because this bothers me um yeah. i want to see the entire backlash with this image on the screen so i can get a sense of scale for how big because uh, my gut reaction right now is think about the Gottlieb premieres like Victory, that already their score displays were teeny tiny as is. Yeah. And now imagine that on this screen. Um, yeah. Jared, you though thought that there is a potential that maybe it the screen could just display the DMD. Is that right? I've, I've seen hints of that in some of the, the Facebook forums. I think the At Games forum, um, Patrick might have actually mentioned, or somebody in there, who I, I would trust to say knew what they were talking about. Okay. Um, said suggested that you could choose whether just to, to just have a full back, like full screen in the back with the score display on, or a mixture of the back glass and score display. And for most tables, that wouldn't be a problem. Yeah. Um, you you go with the full, basically the DMD dominating that back screen. Mm-hmm. No worries mm-hmm. at all. You know the strength of that back glass area. In fact, if you think about it. The, the back glass on the at games cabinet is the only part of the the actual cabinet body that isn't loud and isn't artified. Like you have a look yeah. at it, yeah. there's nothing there. It's just black. Yeah, and that's that's a good thing. Like if I was to have a choice between just a b- flat black cabinet with some discreetly placed Legends pinball logos on the side, like a big hero image Legends pinball down each side of the cabinet, and then a Legends up the top and the bottom. And shoot, you can go up. ahead and slap a giant Gottlieb logo on yeah, there too. I don't care. Absolutely. Totally. I'd sign me up for that. Like, I would absolutely prefer that over that collage of grossness. Right. Um, no. But hey, once but it's yes. wedged in between other things, then maybe you won't have to see the ugly... Uh, and one that's of the... totally the case. Like you, the the side art is only for when you unbox it, right. really. One and other... if you own, it's only in your, it's the only thing in your room. Then one you other image to look it. at. Okay, so they had video. <laughs> I took a screenshot. Uh, they had video of it actually playing. Um, again, it was really wonky video, like somebody holding an iPhone. It was shaking and everything. Um, yeah. And I I wish that again they'd come out. And we can see the play field in conjunction with the back glass working, so that we have a. True they need sense. they need a camera B, don't they? They need Not they need a camera, camera B. No, just a wide shot that shows me play somebody field playing back the glass. thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um. My. My gripe, and this is with Farsight, really flat looking. Yep, this um, was a problem with like the pistol poker. I remember playing it on on Android. And I really had a hard time working out where that t- upper play field. There, there is actually an upper play field on this machine, folks. Yeah. And you can't tell because yeah. it's so flat and so 2D, this play field. Um, the, the ball, uh, which you can see there on the flipper, right there it looks round. But if you do happen to catch the video, when it goes up near the top, it almost goes a little bit egg-shaped. And mm-hmm. that was also a problem because I did get to play... Uh, a prototype Arcuda cabinet up at Farsight when they had the Connect hooked up, turning the whole thing into a 3D, well, not 3D playfield, but uh, it would change perspective as you move. Yeah. And the one complaint that I had was that it made the ball and the pop bumpers all look A-shake at the top. Yeah. So it was playing with perspective. So the farther up it went, the more things squished and yes. and, and distorted. And to me, it looks like that's a carryover here. Um, again, that they're basically using, it confirms to me that they're using the 
uh, cabinet mode that they developed for Arcuda. Um, because it looks they never had a dedicated cabinet mode available. Nope, looks like they just went, Oh, we're going to reuse that now. The other thing I want to point out this is our first uh, instance of being able to see that, yes, the play field, the monitor itself, is sunk down into the cabinet because mm. um, you can see the cabinet walls there. Uh, yeah. But notice how you do not see cabinet walls on the, the play game. field. Mm. Right. It literally looks like the monitor is the actual wooden play field. And everything sits on top of that. So again, this, there's where world. it's it's about selling the illusion. Now, I bring that up because I'm going to prepare something here. If I can find it, because I had it. Uh, Zen put out a video of uh, Mel playing the Marvel pinball cat. Oh, yeah. I saw this on on my tweet stream. Right. Yeah, he was uh, so, actually clipping the thing. So I want to play this for you guys. Uh, there's a little bit of audio, too. So let me go ahead and there's that. And I'm, before I even play it, I just want you to take a look up at the upper right of the playfield by the uh, the Sentinel. So you can see the full back of the pinball cab, and then you can start to see the uh, side blades. Yes. And they taper down, so that helps sell the depth, the illusion of the depth of the uh, of the table there. I'm yeah. going to go ahead and play the video so that you can see this in action. Get control of my mouse. It would appear that he's turned off all the sound other than mechanical noises. <laughs> yes. Um, for 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 better streaming. <laughs> It's so no, no uh, copywriting. Obviously. Yeah, um, but this is this is pretty a pretty strong demonstration. We've not seen this view. Uh, this is not a view that is available in FX3. Um, it's no, not it's the custom. same view that's on mobile either. Um, this looks no, really it... good, and I'm jealous that it's not going to be in available <laughs> for those of us with cab, uh, or, or even those of us who prefer to play in portrait, like. Um... Like me, that's how I play now. Right, and it would, it would really look slick. Um, um, in okay, so let me uh, bring up the other video here. This one does have audio. Uh, Baby, let's nail them. So, Straight up. Oh uh, well, I apologize in advance because uh, it's going to drown out everything. <laughs> mm. But let's just take a listen to this and see. And again. Um, from this angle, it does look now a little bit more flat, but you can still see the back of the uh, the cabinet. But the good news is now that we get to see it in displaying with the uh, with the DMD. So let me just roll this. Time for Doom Box, baby. Let's nail them. Straight up it. Oh yeah. Boom. They need some clobbering. Yeah, they do. Hit him. Hit Doom. You gotta hit Doom right now. You gotta hit Doom. Ah. Uh, Whoa! I didn't expect that. Give there he is. Come here. All right, true believers. This is your pinball right here, true believers. Fantastic four thing is going after Gotham Doom. I can't wait for you to play this. <laughs> so we're gonna finish on Mel uh, squeaking in on the uh, at games discussion, which is kind of funny. Um, and by the way, I love the fact that. Uh, he, when he tweeted that out, Zen Studios was like, hey, Mel, you need a haircut. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Yep. The guy's having a little bit of a, a fun at his expense. But um, yep. that gives you an idea. Again, it, it's at least he was showing us full play of the game playing with the DVD. An actual human, actual human playing actual cabinet with the game rolling. It. This is what at games need to do. And I've seen feedback in the forums about this. Like they're they're saying, well, I, I don't know how this thing plays. Show me gameplay footage of the thing running. Otherwise, yeah. you're not getting my money. So that's what you need to do at games. Yeah, Show so, the thing I don't running. know how hastily this was thrown together, but um it looks pretty hate well, I mean the the one that um at games did, like yes. all the images, looks pretty hasty. 
um because you know if you are going to release this out to um officially release this out it looks like this 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 footage has been delivered to the at games um marketing partners only uh for them to display um as part of the lifted embargo um because it was apparently a, an information embargo on this um this information so it's like they've just done this as like essentially b-roll footage just for these people but the thing is that because there's no other information out there this is essentially a roll footage yeah um for the product and it doesn't represent it in a very good way like they really need to actually spend some time doing some pretty in-depth gameplay videos of this product because it is it's turning some people off. i'm not saying it's turning everyone off there are going to be some people who just cannot wait to throw money at the screen at this product because yep. they're either legends legends family um members already and they want this cabinet as well or they just like this product over the other ones that are on the market but there are definitely some people on the fence going well i've One. seen okay one up product running it looks good i don't know what this thing looks like running mm, i can't make a decision and i mean obviously this is a vast improvement over what that render was um oh there's 100 percent. yeah like there's some really good things that they've done in this package let's let, let's not like you know with all the shade we're throwing on it let's not let's not take away from that they've really they have listened to what people have been telling them and made some pretty rapid product iterations to meet those demands and this is something that i've heard pretty regularly with with um at games and the way that they run the business they are really responsive to customer feedback which is to their credit so hopefully uh they you know take what we're saying with a grain of salt and you know hey mm, probably at will. games if you were actually working on this stuff if this seems like good input then you know thumbs up you know respond yeah, to awesome. it we're not trying to just you know pile on and be like we're totally pro zen pro arcade one up uh, it's just and we said it last time that's what we've had experience with we've had not the hands-on with the actual pinball cab but i've had hands-on with the arcade one up cab i've had hands-on obviously with zen product um mm. and we've had those conversations with zen and we understand where the feedback is and what the design choices are that are done and basically just asking the same uh of ad games that there's certain things that you're not thinking about from a pinball player's perspective you're thinking at it from, from an a... arcade cabinet perspective exactly mm -hmm. exactly so yeah, pinball is a very different beast you can't you can't um, treat it the same way no and so yeah and you know and and again i'm not going to hold at games to the software that farsight made um no that's not farsight. really something they can control no that's farsight's got to sort that stuff out and but stop you can reusing their mobile builds over yeah, and over again but yeah. seeing as how that you've you know you contracted with farsight you can certainly make demands and say mm, hold them to hey the guys fire. this doesn't look good fix it yeah yeah i would be holding them to the fire with this because like they've they've got a little bit of work to do in the way they're presenting this honestly um because it, what what might have worked on that toy shock machine that you've got in there you ain't gonna work on this like that on your much more expensive much more larger screened cab uh, no there, there's so many things that they really do need to iterate on and due to the upgradable nature of the cabinet they may end up doing it if the price is right goes so, back into our conversation of what will wave two look like <laughs> yeah well what will wave two look like yeah exactly it's uh i'm almost like really as a consumer as much as i want one of these things i'm almost going you know what i i'm not going to buy wave one <laughs> I, I would go, yeah, let's see what wave two looks like because like in my bold prediction that I made in the last episode, there's gonna be there's gonna be dual screens on the um wave twos for um RK one up for sure. Like they can't not do it. And I'd prefer one with, with um full back glass art with the um the blockade marquees um that we offer for free. You know, <laughs> for digital cabinet manufacturer. They will look much better, don't you think? Yeah. <laughs> Wait, wait, with with our logo on the back glass? Oh well, no. What are you just, talking you know, about? The, 
you know the um the all the different back glass art that you prepared oh for the back glass different... art that i made yeah yes we you know they, they could have those we, we give them to them honestly and, um, i'm sure that that zen could come up with better back glass art than what i produce probably could yeah yeah but you know it's it's a starting point it'd be i, I like one. my back glass art and I, th- I think they're great um and we have we actually have pretty good feedback from um a uh a fully played up blockade member of which you don't have to pay a single cent for by the way um <laughs> and uh they they said it was really easy to like get that set up and and actually those back glasses align correctly and the the dmd into them and it just looks much better let's see if i can let's see if i can real quickly well i'll i'll throw a link into the bottom here if you look right now you'll see it um yeah for where you can pick up these uh these back glass, but let me see if I can just really They're quickly... also in the show notes. So if you go over to um, the uh, the website, there's always a permanent link in there to all the back glass art. Um, so Yeah, but I can actually, I have the capability, Jared, of actually showing everybody what these look like. Ooh. All right. So let me just uh, get into my, my Google Drive file where these are, and I will give a little demonstration of what some of these look like. So, here we go. That's over here. I'm going to share my display. All right. So, this is kind of what I did for aliens because I wasn't happy because I'm dealing with a uh a 16 by 9 screen but i wanted that four by three uh orientation orientation yeah hmm. so i created this is, a, this is how it should have been yeah like, so i created the the, the uh i shouldn't say i created i copy and pasted and found various parts <laughs> i found that artwork that had the aliens with the pinball in its hand then i found the the grill the speaker grill and then i added in the zen logo for you know that and and then you can drop your dmd over the top of that area and i made sure that most all the dmds are the same height um but then you know we have things like you know doing it with american dad um and then for all the zen originals I use this style. So it's a multitude of, of Pinball FX3 screens in the background with this particular style of uh, logo going on the front of the DMD. Uh, it's Archer Pinball. There you go, another Zen original of that nature. Juice of the Deep. Yeah. Um, and then if I just pop out of here, give you an idea of... Uh, sure, we'll just go with... Black Rose. Um, so again, that's that's the actual back glass that mm. Black Rose has. Yeah, it's, I didn't alter anything on that. Um, that's the shape. That's the where the DMD was for it. Um, everything. So that's this is what we're talking about. That at games or Farsight should be putting on their monitor. You see the black edges there. It's on a 16 by nine screen. It's just letterboxed in. Uh, With the correct rate, like um, aspect ratio. Right. Um, and look, maybe there, there's a screen there in the flyover mode um, on the, um, the game's uh, photos that you showed that kind of suggests that that's what they've done with theirs. Right. But until we see it running, we can't be sure. So here's um, what this was. This was the screwy one. Because there was no uh, good way of doing Doctor Dude. Doctor um, Dude's hard because of the panel. <laughs> well, I mean, the Bally logo is all the way at the top. It's got this vertical screen. So unfortunately, the DMD just sits over the top of it. And also, there was no way of putting the uh, lenticular or the rotating dude display. That's what's yeah. in the black pit there. Um, and then, which they've you... managed to do for the record on uh, when you're actually looking in flyover mode. Um, on the uh, the the back glass for Doctor Dude, they've actually done that. But look at um, how good would, would Fantastic Four look with that background. I like that background that I did on that. That's the, cool. Uh, with all the myriad of comic books and stuff. Yeah, I that's think that would sweet. be pretty awesome. And then I'll just show, just so people can see what the Star Wars ones look like. Um, just put some hyperspace yep. as the background and and did a. See, they look great. 
So, yeah, yeah we'll yeah. Uh, I'll include the, uh, like I said, in the, the description down below this video on YouTube uh, where you can download the link for that and be able to... Uh, yeah. So, you know, we have them available. Uh, Wilbur's helped out. He um, made 16 by 9 full display. Or, no, excuse me. He did a dedicated 4 by 3 display, so he chopped off all the black. So it, if you have a 4 by 3 display, it'll fit perfect on Go those. straight in there. Mine are for 16 mm. by 9 um, but not stretched. I didn't want any of the stretched. I could find the uh, stretchy versions yes all over the place but they they're no good <laughs> i didn't <Yeah>. like them <laughs> now they're all really good and for people who like to use cabinet mode on zen um they're a great way to just add that little bit of more realism into your build um yeah and, i haven't you know somebody uh, and i've had links to it i haven't seen it in action myself uh there's animated back glasses Ooh. that have been made um, I don't know exactly how to make those work <laughs> with with FX3, but I know that people have made them work. Um, I wonder if the cabinet mode in FX3, for those ones like Safecracker that actually have a live back glass, I wonder if the cabinet mode allows you to actually throw that image up onto a second screen and just have it work. Uh, it's something I haven't played with because I haven't got the cabinet mode set up. Um, but maybe they've a a actually enabled that now for for the um, the Williams well, collection. And there's the other question. I don't know that these the the cabinet mode is anything more than uh, say a GIF. Just the fixed view. of it, just showing blinking lights that aren't coordinated with the actual game itself, or right. if somehow it. I, it's, I mean, how would it pull that information? It doesn't have any access to your ROM. It's just an animated screen file. So yeah, I'm, I'm more talking for, about... I'm, so for Safecracker, no, it's not going to function like Safecracker should. I'm just more talking about has Zen actually coded that into their cabinet mode oh. so you could th you could throw up the, the second screen up there like that. Well, that's because my... I don't understand why Zen hasn't... Why they, yeah. that hasn't been made available. It it, it pains me It would take them so, so little extra effort for them to actually think about the back glass and throw it up as a second screen because the DMD is, is separate. So they could just say that DMD as well as the back glass is Well, not only that, screen. but it's been coded because all you have to do is give a flick up on your, your right analog stick yeah, and, and you can there. see the back glass and it's fully animated to what you are doing at that very time. Correct. Yeah, it's fully synchronized with the play yeah. field. Like the, yeah, they, I don't know why they haven't done that. Hmm. V2. Why have we not complained to Mel about this? <laughs> We should totally complain to Mel about this because he's totally going to go, oh, these two guys said we should do it. So everyone, drop <laughs> everything and go and put that the, the back glasses on the cabinet mode that only 3% of users use for great justice. By the way, gonna Mel is going to be uh, interviewed on Retro... No. I think it's Retro Off Show. No. It's not his. It's Arcade 1UP it's, it's arcade Weekly, whatever that show is. Oh, yeah. Um, yep. That's popping up uh, Sunday so i'll oh, definitely tune in for that yeah because mm. it'll be interesting to see what somebody else's interview style is with mel i haven't seen that yet <laughs> that, that's true he doesn't really appear on many other shows apart from ours yep so um yeah so anyway worth worth checking out uh arcade one up weekly that's what the show is and that will be that that's the same uh show where john d got on and absolutely revealed a whole lot of cool stuff last time about yes, uh, all the is. pinball cabinets so definitely one to check out if you're a bit of an arcade one-up fan. Okay, well, uh, that's that was a lot more than we thought that we were going to have for this week. But that's that's this a week. show. That is a show. That's a show. Um, yeah. We never know what we're going to have to uh, talk about. We try and react, but obviously we're not going to be midweek reacting. It's only end of week reacting on the weekend. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Weekends we're, only. We're weekend reactors. That's right. <laughs> we're, we're your weekly digest of what's happened throughout the week. Yeah. something of that nature so that being said when the next show is going to be it's a good question when's the next bit of information going to drop that we can uh, actually you know, put together an entire show based around that uh, mm. at the very that... at the very minimum it'll be two weeks from now but yes, it might be sooner right. just like this show was sooner that's right and if it's uh, another two weeks from now it's uh, basically then just kicks out the next one to two weeks until we don't have any more information to talk about. So 
That's how our schedules work. Essentially, we're trying to, you know, we want to have a show twice a month at the minimum. Sometimes we have yes. it four times in a month, you know, but we don't want to do only one show a month. That you, that's no. our that's our blockade other go, blockade guarantee. Yeah, there'll always two be at least month. two shows a month. Yeah, of varying quality. If there's no news around, <laughs> starting now. <laughs> starting now. That's right. <laughs> because <laughs> we weren't necessarily that way in the past shoot for those of you that have been with us a very 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 long time back in the day we used to go six weeks between shows oh yeah because it was that hard to organize the eight people that we had in the show to, to all like get into the room at one time and it was chaos oh geez those shows man <laughs> they were rough around the edges weren't they yeah if you ever want a good a, a good snicker and you, those aren't even available the first 10 that, which is essentially the first year when we had all those people. Um, I don't think those are even available anywhere. But if you no, like get lost taste somehow. of it, just go back and find the first episodes that uh, we've thrown up. Um, those aren't going to be the YouTube episodes either. These are the ones that are audio only. So you are going to have to go only. over to the uh, blockadepinball.com slash episodes and uh, hunt them out that way. And go back in time. Yeah. Or you can actually go directly to Shout Engine, which is our podcast host and uh, find them all there as well. All right. Well, again, we appreciate you uh, taking the time to spend with us and uh, see what we have to blather on about on this particular time. Next time, Jared's favorite stuff. Stuffing things. Stuffing things. Wait, is that what's in a turkey? Stuffing thing? No. Okay. Stuffing things. Happy Thanksgiving, y'all. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.